So the lobbyist calls me back. I did another interview right before I'm about to open that afternoon, Wednesday, and says, because I just got off the phone with the county, you know, prosecutor. And he says, are you insane? He goes, are you, you're going to give this guy's clients tickets? He goes, that is the worst looking move ever. And he's like, I don't want to do this. He goes, but I've been ordered from the governor to do this. You know, we have to shut this guy down. And I said, all right, you know, understood. So open the door at like 3.30. It was like a scene from a movie, dude. You had the whole, literally the whole Hillsborough Police Department was called out. They had every road surrounded. 15 of the county sheriffs came, the bulletproof vests and all that. They come in all these, these trucks and all that. And they're like, the governor wants to know, because uh, I knew, they knew I wasn't going to stop. And I said that in one of the TV, I think it was on ABC or something, I would go at least 30 days, you know, with the fines and all that. And he goes, they want to make a compromise with you. I said, oh, what's the compromise? So we went over that and it was outdoor fitness up to 25 people. And my main thing was, is that just for us or is that for everybody, the state? They go, no, the whole state. I said, deal, I'll do that. Welcome back to Unleashing Truth. I'm here with my man, Kyle Newell. On our second episode together, second of many. How you doing today, Kyle? Doing well, Michael. How you doing, buddy? Great, man. So, great workout this morning. Uh, in the middle of uh, muscle camp at Newell's Strength. It's been a, been a fun ride so far. Muscles up, fats down, according to the charts. So, that's, that's a win-win, right? Yeah, that's the way it should be. See how it keeps going. So... What I want to talk to you today about is the reason that I joined your gym to begin with, which was back in 2020. Uh, the shutdown occurred in mid-March, and I didn't have a gym to go to. Everything kind of shut down. And then I saw you popping up, and I realized, hey, there's this new little strength that's available. And I saw it in, in June. And I saw you talking about fasting and and everything else and I was like oh wait how did they do that so I want to ask you what what happened what was your mindset like uh during you know March of 2020 when the COVID lockdowns occurred and what inspired you to try to reopen your gym in that crazy time yeah this is a fun topic <clears throat> So I'll give you the the background as far as from you know I study a lot of worldly things right like you not you know from our conversations and early in before 2020 let's say November I had been hearing about this coronavirus you know, they'd bring it up on like the Tucker Carlson show and I, that's when I used to watch that a little uh, you know I used to watch that almost every night right. And something didn't sit right in my gut with it from that moment. I was like, this doesn't, this does not seem what they're trying, what, you know, and I was just keeping an eye on it. Then the holidays come. So actually, well, I, I kind of, in December, right before Christmas that year, I got a very, very, very bad case of the flu. Uh, and the only reason I went to the doctor is because Devin was uh, very concerned. Like I would go into convulsions and it was bad. But I look back, I'm like, whatever the hell that was, maybe that was one of the early cases because it was right after we came back from Hoboken for a party, I think the next couple of days, man. It, but then January comes and we're doing a seminar over here with Dr. Andre and his uh, video guys talking to me about the coronavirus. And he's showing me pictures and he's like, look, man, I wasn't really paying attention anymore at that point too much. I was like, this thing's just going to kind of fade away. And he's showing me, he's like, look at these, like, look at these pictures from China. It's a Resident Evil symbol, like I, I can't even, the Umbrella Corporation. He's like, and that's at w where they're saying this is so weird stuff. And I was like, oh, whatever. And then February comes and March comes and they started canceling the March Madness games, which I'm a big hoops guy. I, and that, that was annoyed me, man. It really annoyed me. But I knew, and we had a seminar that first, that Friday when everything was starting to get crazy. I had a testosterone seminar which the doctor that was going to do it with me backed out on. because we can't do this. It's not safe. I said, I'm doing it. And we actually, I got a bunch of Corona beers. There was like 60 guys that showed up, smoked cigars. 
then everything goes into lockdown, right? But I, and my gut told me from the moment I heard about this that this was not what they were telling us it was. I, I Devin will tell you from and my buddy Frank, who you've met, you've worked out with. He texted me that night, and we were both on the same page. And we're like, all right, so let's start working out almost three days a week together. We just kept things normal, right? Me and him. Then it shut down uh, as far as my normal routine. I was going to the gym every day, working in the office there. And the funny thing is, um, right from the get-go, I'll give you kind of some of the backstory, a little exclusive. Rutgers football was training at the gym in the, you know, through the first month of the pandemic because they weren't allowed to train at Rutgers. And, uh, you know, my buddies are over there. So uh, first day in the gym, there's like 60 players. The cops come. So somebody called the cops on you guys. I'm like, I'm not open. So... He's like, well, my chief said, I said, that's okay. I said, I'm not open though. So uh, he, he, the guy, the guy was nervous. I felt bad for him, whatever. My initial gut, Michael, was to never close down. But I, with the situation and the way the clients, everybody was scared, right? So I was like, all right, we'll shut down for, so we shut down, go through March, you know, go through April. We're doing stuff for the clients. And at that point, it was early May, um, uh, Devin and I had decided it was uh, we were going to, on May 4th, I remember the date, we were the first ones in New Jersey to make this decision. You had the guys down in South Jersey, that was a different situation. That was more of a, a copycat situation, in my opinion, but we could talk about that later. But May 4th, we made the decision. We're going to open May 18th. That was the date. May 18th is when we're opening. So I'd sent out an email to the clients and some of the former officers or some of the officers that were members, former members were on the list or some out of county got a hold of it and say, you know, well, oh, you shouldn't do this. Well, I said, well, whatever, you know, kind of dropped it. Um, I said, I'm going to do it. Uh, but I don't think they thought I was going to do it. So we did a trial run with our members May 12th or excuse me, right, right around May 12th. But May, May 12th was also the date. So it's actually, it is the right date. Devin was working at the gym. We're doing a trial run to make sure we have protocols in place and that everything's going smoothly. I see a post pop up that LA County out in California is staying closed through August. So this is May. And I was like, this is garbage. I'm like, this is going to go on forever unless people stand up. And I could sense that people were really losing hope. So I'm with the kids at, at they're eating their dinner. I'm in the kitchen and I went on, you know, I like doing my Facebook lives. I went on to the open New Jersey group that I was a part of. And I said, guys, I'm opening my gym next Monday. Uh, I said, you can come support us if you want. I said, but we're opening just so you guys, you know, th there are people that are going to stand up against this. Dude. Next thing I know, the thing goes like viral. That was, the only, you know, I talk about viral, man. It was almost kind of scary because all of a sudden my phone's blowing up and, I think by the end of the night, dude, it had in the five figures as far as views, had like 800 shares. And then Devin came home, like, I said, whoa, now this is, uh, you know, it's real. And again, we weren't hiding this. We weren't going to hide this. The next thing you know, Fox News reaches out to me. Hey, you want to be on the show this weekend? Mm. Of course, I'll be on the show. So I'm on Neil Cavuto that Saturday. Now, the funny thing is that that day before that, one of my friends who's a Hillsborough detective who was a former member, he comes by and says, so what's the deal? What are you going to do Monday? I said, well, I told you guys. I said, I'm opening at 4 o'clock Monday. That's I'm not hiding anything. That's what we're doing. And he goes, well, what happens when we give you a, like a ticket? I go, I figure that's my fee for the day, and I stay open. I go, well, what do you think? He goes, we don't know. He goes, nobody knows how to deal with this. He goes, this is unprecedented. So the, anyway, the next day, Fox then all the other media outlets start getting wind of it, right? And uh, to chill out the rest of the weekend, that was a pretty cool thing, being on the Neil Cavuto show. I actually did an interview right here, you know, where I'm sitting right now. And then Monday rolls around the day we open, and I start getting phone calls at 6 a.m. from one of our former coaches who's an officer. He was going to work out. He said, Kyle, they got the gym surrounded. There's officers. I said, why? I said, I told them I was opening at 4 o'clock. Like I was again, I wasn't trying to be sneaky with any of this. This was not, I didn't go to anybody to ask permission, right? You never do that. I didn't go to anybody for help because I didn't want to put anybody in a bad spot. And um, I'm doing meetings out here at our senior home and all that that day. And we're watching the gym in South Jersey, kind of see, okay, they opened it in the morning. So we got a feel for what might go on. 
and it was, I, I would say it was a successful day for Ian and Frank down there. Um, you know, they got their summons and the police officers left. So anyhow, get a lot of other media outlets saying, we want to interview you today, blah, blah, blah. I get to the gym at like three, you know, now I'm amped. I'm ready to go, man. I'm listening to, you know, I'm a real American type stuff with, with Hulk Hogan and uh, Ozzy Osbourne. But I get in, I just still don't know what to expect. I go in the back door, we open the doors. People start pulling into the parking lot. Before you know, the parking lot's full. They actually had to close the parking lot. I mean, the police are there. So every parking spot is full. There's probably 300 people there. People, Most people I didn't know. A lot of friends came out too. And we opened. And that was, uh, you know, when I, when I made the decision, me and Devin, and then I was really, in my heart, I said, I'm doing this out of love. I'm not doing this to hurt anybody. Uh, um, this is not... I mean, I had people trying to tell me I was racist because I was opening the gym, you know, black people that were friends with with, with some of my black friends. It, this affects African-Americans more. You just had to be immune to all this. People were coming out with the most stupid thoughts, right? The ridiculous thoughts. I don't know how you can connect race to this, but it, it, that's I, what I see. I see. It, yeah. Uh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. So that's you really got to be reaching on that one. Real and to me, I'm like, yeah. Hey, and you know, there's a lot of lessons with what went on. We're, we're dealing with haters and all that, but we opened successfully. You know, I was on a bunch of new spots that day, and then it was it was Tuesday. There was less fanfare. Wednesday, and I get my my tickets each day, my summons, and that is uh, each summons was a thousand dollar fine and up to six months in jail. So I get one, I get two. Day, now day three again. I'm I'm friends with a lot of these officers. They can't say, Kyle, tomorrow that we've been ordered, we got to give your clients tickets. I said, all right, do what you got to do. You know, I said you guys do what you got to do, and and I'll do what I have to do. So Wednesday comes around. I'm working out at the gym with Frank. Uh, Bill Spadia show wants me to be on, so I take a break from our squats, go on a Bill Spadia show, which was cool, and. But then I'm getting calls like, you know, from my officer friends, Kyle, they're going to arrest you today. Today's they're going to arrest us. All right, whatever. You know, so they're walking me through. We'll pick you up at the station at night. They're, not, they're probably not going to detain you. We'll pick you up and that'll be it. So me and Devin go into the day thinking I'm going to get arrested. I'm getting calls from high level people around the state, lobbyists and all this saying, you know, that I'm connected with in one way or another uh, through just knowing a lot of people and, and the one calls me and says, you know, his son's an officer in Hillsborough. Says, Kyle, there's going to be this huge rally at your gym tonight. And this guy, this supposedly there's this guy coming with concealed carry and he's not right in the head. And I said, I don't know anything about this. I said, I'm just opening my gym. I don't even know where the people saw that. Something on Facebook. So the lobbyist calls me back. I did another interview right before I'm about to open that afternoon, Wednesday, and says, because I just got off the phone with the county, you know, prosecutor. And he says, are you insane? He goes, are you, you're going to give this guy's clients tickets. He goes, that is the worst looking move ever. And he's like, I don't want to do this. He goes, but I've been ordered from the governor to do this. You know, we have to shut this guy down. And I said, all right, you know, understood. So open the door at like three 30. It was like a scene from a movie, dude. You had the whole, literally the whole Hillsborough police department was called out. They had every road surrounded. 15 of the county sheriffs came, the bulletproof vests and all that. They come in all these these trucks and all that. And there's nobody there as far as this this big big rally. It's, Are we not supposed to be gathering because of the virus? Well, at that point, yeah, it was uh, – <laughs> I don't even know if that was the thing. yet. the six feet silliness. And Just saying the but, hypocrisy of gathering to stop you from having a small gathering. Small <laughs> gathering. Actually, so I left out a part on that Wednesday – which is, I guess, a key part to the story, is my buddy, um, who was a member, longtime friend, the Hillsborough prosecutor at the time for years, reaches out to me Tuesday night and says, what are you doing, man? He says, come see me. I go, all right, when do you want me? He says, tomorrow, which is Wednesday. I said, should I bring my lawyer? He goes, no, just you and I. Just come. So I went to his office. He said, why didn't you come to me for help? And I said, well, Frankie, I said, I, I was not putting anybody. Again, I, I know a lot of people throughout the years. So I wasn't putting anybody in a position where they had to feel like they had to help me, you know, and this was my decision. And he's like, well, he goes, first of all, he goes, I can't prosecute you because I'm your friend and I believe in what you're doing. 
Then we start, he says, well, let's call this person. And we call Roy Fryman, who is instrumental. Roy was a former member. He's an assemblyman mm -hmm. and lives in Hillsborough. And Roy says, uh, so he's on the phone. Why, you know, why didn't you call me? Same thing. I'm like, Roy, I was not, this was not, uh, I was not looking for favors. Roy shows up at the gym when, when all the officers are there. And Roy's trying to say, why can't you just let him work out outside? He's like, why do you have to give him tickets? And he's like, they're like, we've been ordered. This is what we have to do. Okay. So four clients actually went in. Thank goodness. Because if nobody went in, it's almost like they won. Right? So four clients. And I told him, I said, you guys go in. I will pay any fees you get, any fines. It's on me. But I said, no, they, this might be on your record. I, I don't have any control over that. So they went in. Um, then Roy calls me back at 5.30 and says, can you meet tonight? So I already got my third summons, right? I'm like, yeah, what's up? He goes, come to my office. He goes, it's going to be me, you, and the county officials. So, all right, I'll be there, man. So I showed up, and it was me, Roy, uh, the, the county prosecutor. His name is Mike. He's a great guy. And the chief of detectives. So they're there. You know, it's the four of us. And they're like, listen, man. We love what you're doing. We respect you. We watch your videos. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. These guys are actually watching. Like, we we'll watch you walk up and down your street. And you're making these videos. And they're like, the governor wants to know. Because uh, I knew they knew I wasn't going to stop. And I said that in one of the TV. I think it was on ABC or something. I would go at least 30 days, you know, with the fines and all that. And he goes, they want to make a compromise with you. I said, oh, what's the compromise? So we went over that. And it was outdoor fitness up to 25 people. And my main thing was, is that just for us or is that for everybody, the state? They go, no, the whole state. I said, deal, I'll do that. You know, so then they go, okay, we're going to go back to them. So I'll tell you what happens there in a second. But that night we wound up we're drinking bourbon in Roy's office. It was also, it was one of the most surreal moments of my life. But you think about you going from the morning, you think you're getting arrested. Now you're drinking bourbon with these guys, a meeting that the governor called and so anyway, the next day they call chief of detectives, Kyle, he's going to make the announcement tomorrow. Your clients won't get summons today. You will still get a summons. You know, you'll have to deal with that, however. Um, but I said, okay. And then Murphy made the announcement on Friday, that Friday. And, uh, you know, cool thing was, man, when um, the prosecutor was not supposed to be in contact with me directly just to protect him you know, to make sure there was no relationship, the county prosecutor. So that Sunday night, which was Memorial Day weekend, I was going down to, I was invited down to speak at the shore that weekend uh, for a big rally. My phone rings, don't know the number, and then I see a text. Hey, it's Mike. Uh, let me know when you can talk. So I said, hey, man, I call him back. What's going on? He said, I just got on vacation. I know I'm not supposed to call you, but I'm on vacation, so I'm not working. He goes, are you happy with the way everything went? I said, yeah, Absolutely. And he goes, uh, he gives me some insight. He's like, you know, I came home, my wife asked how you were. And he's like, you know, he goes, I would have a beer with that guy any day. He goes, you know, good dude. He goes, Kyle, but they came back to me. The state came back to him the next day and said, what's he going to do? And they said, uh, well, Mike said, he's going to open. He's going to do what we said. He, he, he agreed to it. And then they started talking about, well, we're going to get the county, the health department involved and put locks on the doors and blah. He said, if you do, he goes, first of all, this is not some stupid meathead. He goes, this guy gave me his word and I gave him my word. And he goes, he goes, Kyle, I told them, he goes, if you do that, he goes, I will have this, the county SWAT team there to stop you guys. So I thought that was awesome. You know, kind they're of trying to do an underhanded approach there. Yeah. yeah. Right. The way that that side operates usually. Right. Mm -hmm. But the, so that, that's kind of the, the behind the scenes story, but a lot of haters, a lot of haters, man. Um, you know, I made that video and Murphy made the announcement somewhere on my Facebook page that had like 15,000 views, thousands comments. And I don't, I never, I didn't read any of this stuff, man, because some of my staff was getting upset that, man, they're saying this, I said, it doesn't matter. They're giving me their attention. They're giving me the most valuable thing they have, their time and attention, the haters. And I said, it doesn't make any difference to me. You know, they're giving, they're giving me their most, like, think about the irony of that. They hate me. They hate me because I stand for this. And, you know, uh, I said at the time, history would prove me right, and history proved me right. Right. And, yeah, we're, I have so many follow-up questions and thoughts, <laughs> but 
Two for me. First thing I'll yeah, first thing I'll say is I uh, you know, I appreciate the way you stood up and I think that it's a great lesson for everybody to realize like, hey, you stood up and you didn't ask for any favors. You just said, "Hey, I'm doing this and I'm doing it on my own." And you have that, you know, do what you say you're going to do. Uh, and they're trying to call your bluff and you're like, "No, nah, I'm 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 opening it. I'm doing it." You know, I'm not like a lot of you people, I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do every day. Yeah. So that was the first part of it that, that got it going. And then, but you couldn't have done it without the help of that guy, Mike, without Roy. And I think that they respected you more because you weren't looking for any whiff of a handout whatsoever. You were just like, no, I'm doing this and this is why. And I'm not just doing this for my clients and my family. I'm doing this for New Jersey. Cause look, you helped, the rest of New Jersey and you helped, you know, if everybody did things like that across the country, across the globe, I don't think we'd be in the place we are in right now. Exactly it, man. Exactly it. I mean, it was a small handful of people around the country that did that. Yeah. And, and again, I think it had probably attracted, you know, people like me, people who were, you know, starting to question, you know, why are things happening the way they're happening here? And, uh, you know, but that's what I first remember. I remember the outdoor workouts and, uh, you know, so I kind of came there after the madness. I, uh, I wish, yeah. I wish I was there during the madness. I wonder, I was thinking to myself, would I have been one of those four or five who walked in probably, but I, I can never probably say for sure. I, I probably would have, but, uh, you know, I, I'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember that when I met with you. Yeah. I remember yeah. you in because of that. Yeah, and, uh, and and that's important though because when you think about the nuts and bolts of the situation, you have a virus that all sides of, we have all different types of divergent views on this as a human people. But one thing we know, it affects people who are immunocompromised and who are not in great shape. So yeah. I would think that working out and being in better physical shape, your lungs, your heart, your mind, everything would help combat the disease. And that I believe is what you said as well, right? In a couple of your videos yeah. back then. Oh yeah, yeah, they would try to, you know, why are you doing this, blah, blah, blah. And I would bring up exactly those logical points that you just brought up. And that's where you could see that this was not, this was intentional, this was a, uh, it wasn't about logic, right? This is about tyranny and complete control. And most people, some people still can't see that, that that's what that was about. But if logically, yeah, get sunlight, work out, social, social bonds are huge. And I remember with the mask stuff, they were, that, that was before the mask became crazy. I don't know if you remember that. Like that was before people started losing their mind with the mask and it became like this, this huge virtue signaling thing. Cause I refused, right? To, to work. And, and I told the team from day one, I said, you will not wear a mask in my gym or will not be required here. That was in March, you know, and, you know, they would try to get me in, in some of the, the uh, journalists would try to question me on that. And I would explain a lot of the sun. Look, this thing ain't healthy for you. Breathing carbon dioxide through this, not being able to expel all your carbon dioxide. And uh, I said, you can do what you want, but this is not a, they don't have to wear one in my gym, you know, and they would, um, they would always try to put you in corners, paint you in corners and politically or whatever it was, but I wouldn't take any of the debate. Was that part of the agreement at all? No, uh, no it was, it was more like June when they started really getting nuts with that stuff, which okay. is the BLM, BLM type of stuff and George Floyd stuff. But right. Yeah. They, um, but I was very clear that no, I'm not wearing a mask and no, you know, nobody's required to wear a mask here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I uh, I wore the mask for a little bit, and then uh, something happened. It was like we we're playing softball, and we didn't get our lights. They, they, we we could they let us play softball on the field, but they wouldn't give us lights. And I was like, why? And they're like, oh well, because of what's going on. It's like, well, wait, we're outside. It's night time. Why can't? So it's like, wait, I can go to a restaurant and wear a mask walking in and then sit down at the table. Then it won't get me, but I'm outside and it's late at night. And I just, I just started questioning it. I was like, wait a second. So what if I'm sitting down outside? I should be good then, right? Yeah. 
yeah, that's, no, uh, that's, that's my whole mindset on it. And I was, and so that was yeah. back in 2020 and I, and I've tried to be very respectful about it. Um, but now, you know, we're two years later, uh, and you know, I, I just can't be, I, I can't be that respectful anymore. I, I just got to be like, listen, like, I don't agree with it. I've, I've actually come across a couple of college kids in the last few months. And we talked about what happened at colleges, even it's still happening right now, Kyle. That's why I even bring it up. Um, yeah, I know. you know, and they were saying, oh yeah, we all think the blue masks don't work, like whatever, but we just don't want to say anything. We don't want to, we don't want to cause any waves. And I was like, well, you know, if you all just band it together, if you all just said no, you know, the school still needs your parents' money. It's like at the end of the day, they would relent. You don't have to be mean about it. You don't have to be, you know, yelling no. and screaming, just say like, no, I don't, we don't think this is right. And we just want to be able to breathe air and, and be normal again. And it's, it's not good for our psyche, you know? It's not good for yeah. me, man. I wore it and it wasn't, I wasn't social. I, I just found it like it, it bothered me. And yeah. that's not me being a wuss. Yeah. It's just, it's just not, it's not normal. It's not how we're meant to be. I know I went on a rant about masks there, but you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's important because I feel the need to talk about these things, even if we all disagree on it and, and we've come at it from different perspectives we're all together here. It's September of 2022. And I think everything should be a personal choice. And especially when it relates to kids yeah. uh, in our, in our younger generation, that's really what we're both about. You know, we both have kids, we both, you know, work with kids, coach kids. Yeah. And these people like adults, adults, adults can do what they want, but stop trying to always influence the kids, let them figure things out for themselves. And recognize that like there's so many societal issues with technology right now that the last thing they need is to you know be forced to wear something that takes them further and further away from connecting with people and drawing it back to what you had described earlier with your story i think that's the other important aspect of this is that people miss that connectivity it's not just working out i think that you've mentioned this a lot of times, especially in 2020 when you were talking and you were like, you need that community. And, and, and it never really resonated with me until I joined Newell strength. And I like, I was like, yeah, that's right. And then I realized like, yeah, this is what I'm about too. I love building communities. I love being the fact that I've been in this town for, you know, three decades already, you, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, man. Yeah. And as you get older, that's something you start really re- realizing how important that is, you know? Yep. So what do you, what's your, so what was your relationship like with the, I know there was Ian Smith in, in South Jersey. Did you have any connection with him at all? Or what was the, the ebb and flow Not there? prior to it, no. So we made the announcement first, right, in that group. Next day, I guess, uh, maybe, uh, I don't know exactly what, I mean, I've heard different stories with those guys and I've coordinated more with uh, his partner, Frank. But the next day, they get on, I think, the, one of the New Jersey radio shows and they get on Tucker Carlson the next night. So they kind of, they, they got up the gate first as far as media goes. And then that's obviously why they garnered uh, a lot of national attention too. And that, I mean, look, we, we chatted a few times. We both spoke at that event down the shore together. Um, but I, and I always got the vibe from, from him, nice guy, smart guy that he wanted to keep distance from me. Right. Um, cause I've heard him on, on other interviews where, you know, we're the only ones that did it. I'm like, you know, you guys didn't start this. You know, and again, I didn't do it for attention, but I'm like, tell the truth, you know, it was over far, but that was a red flag to me. Okay. What was the actual motive, which I believe was PR, right? So it's great PR being in the press. You always want to be in the press. You always want to be in media, but that is not why we did it. Um, so we spoke together at that event down there. Uh, I haven't talked to him in a while. I haven't talked to him in a while, but you look at the results. We got results in three days. There's, they were getting fines a year later still. So, so you, you seem like you took a more honest approach in your opinion. Yeah. yeah, It's uh, they were more force, you know, where I, I, mine was really from my heart. And I remember we spoke at that event down the shore. So he went first, you know, there's congressmen, there's always people. And he gave a good speech, man, but it was a, it was, you could tell it was aggressive. It was trying to get people amped up. Then I go up and I remember it was on, uh, it was on one of the channels. And I, my friends texted me like, that was the, 
most bizarre thing to witness because when I went up, I talked about fear and how fear doesn't exist, but everybody got quiet. It was completely different energy. You know, it wasn't trying to get people. It was just like, listen, this use this as a learning tool, what, what the fear is and how people are trying to control you with fear. And it, it's just a figment of your imagination. It wasn't like, we got to fight against them. What are you fighting against, right? You, you know, fight, fighting is not really going to do anything. And, and with, so, uh, you know, you take that to what we did against the state or what was going on around the world, really. These type of people, I'm not talking about Ian, I'm talking about like the, the leftist ideology. If you stand up to them and you, you can try to cancel me, I could give two shits. It doesn't make any difference. Like I had a lot of, it's a lot of nasty messages, a lot of nasty emails. I don't care that. So they back down. Once you stand up, you don't have to use physical force. They back down. As soon as they realize, oh man, I picked on the wrong person or they're not going to, they're not going to acquiesce and just, you know, uh, be scared of the social judgment that's going to come their way. They back away. They shrink away, man. So that that's a, a huge lesson. Yeah, I like how you, you, I came up with a term a few months ago, respectful rebellion. You yeah, respectfully you. rebelled. I think, I think there's a time where you need to sometimes be aggressive, like I was saying earlier. Sometimes you have to just, it's like, no, no, this is what it's going to be. But not at that time that you did it. Because yeah. it had just started and everyone was scared. So I think the philosophical empathetic thing to do was actually do what you did, which was to speak on fear. Which, by the way, I saw you put a post a couple, few months ago saying that, you know, I think I'm a philosopher. I'm like, Kyle, I could have told you that two years ago. You're, we are both <laughs> philosophers, all right? <laughs> oh, man, that, yeah, no, that's funny, man. It's, yeah. We are both philosophers. And that's because you're, I'm not exactly sure the exact definition of philosophy, but it's, it's about thinking about things from an abstract, yeah. you know, 3d five-dimensional view and yeah. always saying like hey i don't have everything figured out but there's so many different angles that i'm i have to open my mind to here and that yeah. goes for life and that goes for how you like you said moving in that energy so you know i think it's i, I think this is a great lesson for for people to understand um do you think what, what do you think this showed about leadership and how, the way you view leadership and has it changed before and after that? Um, what, what it showed me really about leadership is if you, first of all, you got to have your, you got to really believe in your own values. And most people don't know what their values are. They're not super clear on them or they're, they're just catchphrases. They don't mean anything. So this decision when I made it was very easy because it was just one of the values I live by. You know, and I'm not out there to harm people. I'm doing what's best for my heart, from a place of love. So I knew there was nothing bad that could come to me from that. There was nothing they could do to me that was going to harm me because of the place that I was coming from. And then as far as leadership, uh, there's different levels, right? And I realized, and I, the thought pops in my head once in a while, with, you know, right? Like everybody will have self-doubt at some times. And once in a while it pops in my head, I'm like, you know what? I'm one of the only people in the world that did that. Right. So I look at that and I said, you know, you get, you get these guys that are famous. You get all these guys that they didn't do that. Right. So they didn't have the leadership. They didn't step in and do, do the thing that was the hardest thing to do at that time. And I think that's what, what it showed me is you got to, no matter you're going to have as a leader, that's what it means. You're going to be alone. A lot of the time you're going to be out on the Island, but you got to make the decision and you might be wrong. And that's okay, but as long as you, you you're following your path and your belief system, um, the leaders real leadership can be can be scary, you know it can be scary, and that's why there's there's not a lot of what I think are true true leaders out there, right? But I also believe that leadership is a progression, and it comes down we talk about philosophy, right, and the self awareness, and we all have to lead ourselves first, and. Uh, I look at all the years of the discipline I had with everything I've done with bodybuilding and uh, just anything where I put my mind to it, that all led me to that moment. You know, the, the, all the stuff, all the times like we, when we work out, how hard we push ourselves, that all made that decision a little bit easier, right? Just putting yourself through that and knowing that you're going to be okay. But yeah, I mean, it showed, it showed me a few things, man. It showed me that there's, um, again, there wasn't, there was, and there was a huge lack of leadership from people that should be leaders like politicians and whatnot. Yeah. 
Well, two, two follow-ups is that number one, you know, you'd said earlier, uh, yeah, he's not just some meathead. And, uh, it reminded me of, you know, thinking about going back and watching some stuff with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I got to thinking, it's like a lot of bodybuilding in general, you need to have discipline to look that good. It's not oh, just yeah. like the average person be like, Oh, well, they just took steroids. Like, no, you have to literally every day you have to eat right. You have to work out insanely hard and, and often, and you have to sleep. You have to do all of these things. You have to be disciplined to do that. So therefore, if you do that in your, for your body, it is, it is likely that you have a very strong mindset. Oh, yeah. So it's not surprising to me to see guys like you see guys who are very, you know, very big and strong and have a bodybuilding background to be kind of philosophical and to be very intelligent. I think that there are, of course, there are some uh, meatheads and rockheads out there, yeah. but sure. it, it's a balance. But it, I think that's something that I, you know, I just thought of because, you know, it's, it's just, true, a, I think just a, it's an insecure thing that people who, you know, maybe aren't in the position they want to be in, in terms of how they look, they just kind of just throw that there. It's like, it's like, no, nah, man, like you got to lead yourself. So you, you know, and again, every, you know, it's not that you're special because you're big or something, but it's like, no, that, that kind of daily progression. And that's the second thing. It's yeah. like, I know you have a routine where you kind of, you know, you wake up every day and you're like, okay, what am I doing today? Uh, you know, where am I going in life? What, what are my goals for today? And it's like when you do that on a personal level, that gives you the repetitions to do it to lead a team like you're doing right now, right? Yeah. Is that is that what your point is? A thousand percent. You can't. People know when you when you fake stuff. You know, people know when. Uh, you know, so and it actually starts the night before, right? I plan out my day the night before. Right. I know what the morning routine is. I know all this stuff. And so again, if you can't lead yourself, how, how are you going to lead anybody else? You can't. Yeah. yeah. And they won't, they won't believe you're authentic. Right. Yeah. Eventually it'll, the facade will crack, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm almost there. I'm almost, I'm almost to the point where I got my routine down, but oh, not quite. It's like, I want to have my, my day. I got to like, I can't do the daily stuff until I have the weekly stuff. So I might have to work backwards and just have like, I have weekly goals and then I try to break it from that, but I might actually go a little larger and go like monthly goals. What am I going to accomplish this month? Yeah. And then work backwards that way. So yeah, I got 30 days to do this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So yeah. you think, so you think of, uh, you know, think big, but then you got to act small. That's what I always tell people. Right. Think, but act small. Don't think of massive action because that's going to burn out your willpower. And it's going to kill your desire. Think small. What can you do right now to move you towards that? Yeah. Uh, and let's spend the last couple of minutes here talking about the temple of doom because that was a incredibly brutal workout. And, uh, <laughs> it was hard. And, and that's the thing. It's like, Hey, just, just, just one, one set at a time, one step at a time. Hey, let's just get from here to that pole. Cause what, what do we do? We walked, uh, a, it was a half a mile walk with five guys with holding and pushing various heavy objects. That was hard, man. And that was kind of spur of the moment because, uh, Dan Wolverine showed up and they were using the sleds in class. So we kind of had to modify what I had planned. And, uh, you know, it shows you what inspiration can do, man. So we created that on the spot and then we did it with the, so what we did guys, you know, Michael's referring to, we did prowler sleds, we had three prowler sleds, two of them had two, two forty fives and a 25 on each pole. And somebody was guys were going to be dragging that with the harness up and down the blacktop, which was grinding. There was another one we had to do a back pedal with that had a plate in the 25, about a hundred pound sandbag and 110 pound handle farmer's walk handles. And as the five of us had to make it down a quarter mile and back and we could switch off however we wanted. It wound up taking us like, I don't know how long that portion took, but that workout was like over two hours yeah. and you got to challenge. You can't do that all the time, but you got to challenge yourself. You know, you have to challenge yourself sometimes like that. Yeah. No, that was, that was uh, very grueling, but it was also, uh, you know, you, you, you feel really alive when you're in the middle of it, you know, you do. your, you your do, thoughts right? are very clear. Yeah. You know, and it, it's like, you don't want to converse a lot of times. You don't want to waste energy. No, you, you're trying to <laughs> deal with it yourself to discomfort and, you know, and that's the awareness piece, right? A lot of people will, their brain, your brain is trying to tell you, you're going to drop over. You're going to die. And you realize you're not going to die doing that. Right. So what's really, what, why stop there? 
right? Yeah. It's it's the the brain doesn't like that discomfort of doing it. But I guarantee you, right, all five of us will remember that workout forever. Yeah. Right? Just because how hard it was. So it gets burned into your nervous system and your psyche. Yeah. I think it took about an hour. I think it took about an hour and a half to do that portion. But of that course portion. we did we lunges did at 200 yards of walking lunges beforehand. Yeah, it was tough. Yeah. With with weight on the back, of course. That's that's hard, man. Just to just to hold that for yeah, even eight, that, 10 like minutes. that this morning, right? Yeah. That's a that's a you know, it's tough sure. in the butt, man. But I never could have thought I I never would have thought I could have done that. Even a couple months ago. I never would have thought I could take 95 pounds on my back and, and lunge, do legitimate lunges for 200 yards. Yeah. So, so I, I, I'm happy. Like I, that's part of growing up. And it's like, wow, it's like, it's, it's, you need the strength and you need the stamina. But I it. probably could have done it all along, but I didn't realize I could do it. It's exactly it. It's, you know, as a, uh, you know, what I do as a coach, right. And, and as I get older, I realize the importance of being a coach. It's not just a, you know, uh, somebody who gets to wear sweatpants and stuff like that. It's you, you get, you got to help people get from point A to point B. It's a point they can't get to yet by themselves. And most of the time, almost all the time, Michael, it's about, it's just in their mind. You got to show them like, like you did, right? You got to say, Hey, you're coming with us. We're going to do this. And there's no choice, right? There's no, you just do it. And, and that's the way great things happen when you, when you break that barrier and then next time you break it some other way, but it's really about, uh, yeah, we, we don't realize how physically, mentally, spiritually capable we are of many things. Right. And we're talking just about the gym, but this applies to everywhere in life. Like we, I think, I think I really feel like technology, which I brought up earlier. I feel like technology has dumbed us down a lot. I feel like it's kind of, you know, removed us from being very sentient, aware human beings that are capable of way more than we can imagine. And I feel like that's something that I need to get back to personally. I know it's something, you know, I'm sure you're on your own spiritual journey. Yeah. So that's, uh, I think this, uh, you know, I think on that note, I think this was, it was awesome. Uh, it was great to hear about, you know, that episode of your life. I'm sure you feel, I'm sure you feel very relieved right now <laughs> and you feel like you walk into work every day you wake up every day like hey that was i'm happy i went through that and and now you know i'm reaping the rewards yeah no yeah definitely man it's um i'm blessed um, i was grateful for that every every moment i was very drained that it took me a little while to recover from that but that's maybe what next episode we can go over that that ties right into the spiritual aspect you know that's a that was a big stepping point for me spiritually going through that and not realizing it necessarily at the time, but, um, yeah, that, that might be a good thing to talk about next time. Yeah. Next time we're going to talk, we're going to be a, a purely philosophical episode. All right. I'll hey. <laughs> tee <Cool>. that up. <laughs> Is my water bottle still in Hillsboro? Yeah. It was on the window. So you didn't see it. This is what happens when I don't get enough sleep. You see what happens? I put it on the window. So for you, you got to come tomorrow now. My daughter was giving me crap. She's like, she's like, you were supposed to text me when you got to the gym. She didn't think I was going to go on Thursday to muscle camp. And I was like, no, I'm going. And then so what happened was I couldn't fall asleep until like 1.15 or something for whatever reason. So then I got up. I wasn't going to go. I was like, no, no, I got to go. I got to go. Otherwise, I'm going to stink at softball later because I can't go. I can't go do that muscle camp and then go play softball. It wasn't going to work. So I got there and I went. And then she like lays her arm. She's like, you never texted me. You didn't go. I was like, no, I went. I swear. I just completely forgot. I forgot because I, I was like, but you remembered to go to the gym. I was like, yeah, but I forgot. She's like, you forgot our conversation. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and that's what happens when I don't sleep. <laughs> yeah. Sleep is, sleep is king, man. It's king, buddy. All right, man. Enjoy your All day. Right. We'll talk. You too, bud. Later. All right. Later.